Hey, this is Kevin Kitchens with Once Upon a Game. I'm going to do a quick uh, uh, turn or two here of Nemo's War. Uh, just sort of a mini uh, gameplay overview, just showing you how a turn works. Um, there, there are a great many other how to plays, how to set up, so all that kind of thing. But I uh, uh, just kind of want to give you a, a bit of a look inside a turn here as I'm near the end, uh, I think. I'm in, uh, I'm in Act 3. And I have already had the uh, Rising Action card drawn, so I am now in the final few cards here uh, of the Adventures deck, about to draw one. Um, I am playing the uh, Explore option. That's the, that's the suggested one for the first uh, turn. Um, in playing it, the components are, are very nice. Uh, there is a little bit of separation anxiety as you... Uh, as you separate some from the uh, from the sprue, uh, some of the layers of the cardboard. I kind of want to cling, so just stop yourself, be careful. Maybe punch them in the reverse, get a little knife out or something. But that only happened like one or two, and then once they're punched, they're fine. Um, uh, so that's that. So Nemo is uh, the Nautilus is sitting here in the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, I just finished a very very good turn in which I what did I do? I emptied out. I emptied out the North Atlantic because I needed to free some space for some ships to come in during the placement phase. Uh, I have no, none of the starting weight ships are left. They've all been flipped. Um, I started out treating it like kind of a war game and going in and just attacking everything in sight. And then I looked at my my motives card and I see that if I, for sinking warships, I actually get a penalty of minus one each on my final score. Uh, I don't get penalized for non-warships. Um, but those are the ones that uh, that get me lower. You'll see here, like on the opposite of this, is the uh, anti imperialism. And if I were playing that, then I would get uh, a plus two for non warships and no penalty on warship sunk. So uh, there's two other uh, motives as well. But for now, we'll just I'm finding the same one right here on the board, which is incredibly, incredibly well laid out. Uh, love that it's mounted, love that it's. Uh, uh, a lot of the stuff you need are right here on the board, and it's very nice. It's got a nice range to it, so you can get everything you need pretty simply. Uh, really only a few, rule, few rules lookups after I started playing. So uh, the, turn, the turn phase is really simple. You're going to start uh, kind of like a state of siege game. Uh, you're going to start by uh, drawing a card and doing what the card says. Sometimes you keep them, sometimes you immediately have to play them, sometimes you have to take a test, which gives you pass-fail <coughs> uh, options. You do build a pass-fail stack. Uh, for example, this test here, I had passed it earlier and then I used it, and when I was done, I, uh, I had to fail it. And all that means is failing it has an effect here on the game, but at the end, I believe the failing just means you didn't pass it, and then you get card bonuses here uh, if this ends up in your pass pile, it ends up in your fail pile. I don't think it's a penalty. I haven't looked at the full scoring yet since the game's not over. Um, that green die does not come with the game. The green die is my typical, this is where I'm at, Mark, in case I have to get up and leave. In case I get up and leave, I can leave that there and I say, okay, the next thing i got to do is do that action. So anyway, pull that off. Um, so, uh, you, so you start out drawing one of those cards, do what it says, resolve that, and then you have a placement phase uh, where new ships or hidden uh, ships will come onto the board, and there are rules for how those get placed. Uh, and then, based on the die roll, you will in, in the later game you get to choose how how many actions you get based on the two die, um, and that gives you your actions. You can carry one action forward between turns, and the most actions you can ever have in a turn is five. There's a lot of similarity to States of Siege. I don't know if this if this originally derived from that. It's definitely, I don't believe, part of that series. Uh, but there's some definite similarities to mechanics, but the game itself is not a States of Siege game. It's actually really, really fun, and you can get going pretty quick. Uh, this is These are the ships I've, I've uh, uh, defeated that I did not use for salvage. You have a choice when you defeat a ship. You can put it in the sea, the ocean, that you defeated it in, and you get points based on that, how how dastardly you were in those various uh, seas. Um, and then you can also build up to f 
uh, five ships for salvage, which you then use to buy salvaged, uh, or excuse me, upgrades. This is the salvage cost you pay to pay for four ships, and you get the steam torpedoes, so on and so forth. So, uh, but in doing in salvaging the ships, you end up losing the benefit from them here, and you see some of them have have value themselves plus the value. Uh, you know, as far as you get. Again, have not looked completely at those uh, score rules yet. Uh, with a Kickstarter, we got uh, two bags here. These are your treasure uh, tokens, and these are your ship tokens. Um, so draw pool. Uh, another thing that's cool is uh, you randomly build this deck, the Adventures deck, uh, at the start of the game. There's some rules for that. It's very simple. Uh, the same number of cards will be in each game. Uh, it's just a matter of where the act cards get placed. Uh, so you may you may put. Uh, you know, five, five and one at one level, or one uh, basically the mode, excuse me. You may put five before the act three, and then you know, seven, and then the other side you may do seven, and then five. So it all adds up to be the same, but the combination is a little bit different, which is a neat, a neat little mechanic. You also have different auto lose indicators here. So I am doing the explore option, and I am at 29, and at if I get up to 36 in notoriety, I immediately lose. Uh, the instruction flip warships to purple side wouldn't apply to me. That would apply to the other, uh, the other two motives, uh, which is war and uh, any, any, can read, Imp imperialism. So you monitor your notoriety there. You have uh, crew resources, uh, Nemo uh, uh, crew and uh, hull. These are ships resources, which you can wager to improve your die rolls. And that's one thing that I like that differs from the States of Siege, which in some sometimes is just luck, just pure luck. And these uh, these give you a lot of ways, options to mitigate. In some cases, you can uh, trade in your treasure tokens and get that many points added to your die roll, if you like, which means you won't get them for scoring because you discard them. Uh, you can also wager these resources. Uh, one thing that's interesting is your as your crew, your, everything starts over here, is your crew and hull uh, weaken the wager is less, but as Nemo gets more, I guess, psychotic <laughs> or towards unstable, uh, he adds more. But you still run the risk of, uh, of of losing it. So what happens is, let's say you were going to do an attack, you can put slide this marker here to get a plus three die roll. You usually only can do one uh, per test or attack. So you add that plus three, and then if you win. If that allows you to pass, then this just goes back to where it was, and you're fine. If you lose, then now you're really in trouble because of the lower die of the pair you roll, just usually a 2d6 roll. If the lower die is a 1, you just go to here. But now you're now that's your, your status. But if it was a 2 through 6, you go 1, 2, and you end up really low. So it's always a risk to gamble. Um, you have other things, there are other treasure icons that come up, or tokens that come up, that allow you to gain, uh, to regain. Uh, here we got a hull, we got a crew, we got an emo. Uh, this is a bonus that you get for a certain action. If you pass a certain test, you get this, which gives you a bonus on uh, in, uh, inciting, which is causing dissension uh, in various uh, land areas that are adjacent to seas. And that's what these black cubes uh, represent. Is the uh, is the incite uh, the rebellions or stuff that you've stirred up? Um, there is an opportunity for these to get removed by the game. Um, in what's called a lull turn, and that's a turn where you uh, you get zero uh, action points. Um, and we'll see that in a minute when we do the battle. So, I'm gonna start here and go ahead and kick off a turn. And the first thing we do is draw an adventure card. And up. All right, this is play, all right? So this gives me two choices. I can lose one Nemo or one character, and you've got six characters um, that sit here to your side, and they can provide you help at different times during the game if you need them. You've got um, Conseil, 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 that uh, gives you a reroll. If you don't use them, you'll get four, you'll get four points. Uh, the second officer gives you plus one action. You got a first officer who gives you plus three actions or a plus three D DRM after a roll. So you can say, I'm going to sacrifice uh, her, I believe it looks like her, uh, to get the plus three. 
But in doing so, when you see at the bottom, when you flip it over, you have a price to pay. So uh, this guy here, uh, Ned Land, I flipped him and I had to take one a notoriety point. So that's not good. In fact, he's been flipped twice. I had a uh, an event that allowed him to come back into play. So I paid two notoriety using him. Uh, and then you got uh, plus two DRM after the die roll, pay notoriety, and plus two actions from the chief engineer. So uh, four of them have penalties for using them, but you have to weigh whether that's necessary or not. So especially up here, if you're going to end up losing a lot of points if you keep it the same. There are also a couple of these uh, chips here that allowed me extra die rolls, no uh, rerolls, which I did use, and uh, that helped me because I was going to lose a lot. So anyway, back to this. Get the test. So I can lose a Nemo, or I can just get rid of a character. Um, I'm not sure if I lose a character to a card if I have to pay that price, because I'm not getting the benefit of that. Otherwise, I can immediately lose one action if I currently have any and fail. So if I fail the card, I won't get those points at the end. Okay, and this is a uh, these are card points and these are uh, explore points, I believe. And for my action here, explore is my second best item. I get a times four multiplier on those uh, card points. Adventure cards is a plus zero, so there's no bonus to them, but I would just lose uh, the actual points that those give me. So I don't want to. I don't think I want to lose a Nemo um, just to keep this card. So I think I'm actually in good shape because it says lose an action if you have any. And as of this point, I have no actions because I did not save any to carry over. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose to fail this and I'm going to lose an action, which is nothing. And I just want to get those potential two or three points and we'll put it there in the fail pile. Fail, loser. I'm going to put this to work here. Okay. So that's done. All right, so that is the card phase. So our turn sequence, we have the event phase. We did that. Now the placement phase. So now we're going to roll the dice for the current act. Each act, it escalates. When you first start the game, you'll roll two dice, two white dice, to determine action. So what you would do is, uh, I'm not going to be able to bring my thing over here, but you roll two dice, and then you get the differential between those two in action, so I would get five actions. That's in the first act. In the second act, you roll a two, die, two, uh, two white dice and one black die. So how that works is you roll. You still get the differential between the two white die. Okay, so I get two actions there. But then all three of these would determine which sees the. You see, got a die here and a die here. It determines which sees uh, which oceans the. Uh, Ships are going to come in at it. But I'm in Act 3, so in Act 3, I'm going to roll. So the S, the uh, the activity escalates as the game gets toward the end here. So I'm going to roll three white die and one black die. And then you may have noticed up here on, the, on this line here, another black die, which is going to get added to the placement roll. If, if you were playing, only if you're playing war footing, and because that you would automatically lose all three of them would have all three other uh, motives have already been lost so this would only apply if you were playing war but you would take this and add it to the placement roll so you'd be placing uh, at least five ships or indicators uh, missing or hidden ship indicators per turn so that's quite a bit so don't want to do that so anyway i am currently at the state where i play three white die and one black die and then i get to choose which of the two white die are going to count toward my actions. So I can create a lull turn if I want or give myself the maximum number of actions. So we're going to do that roll real quick. And I'll pull out my dice tray. A little easier because I don't want to mess up the board. All right, so we have a one, a four, a four, and a six. So what I tend to do is bring these over here so I can work with them. Okay, so I have those over. All right, well, I'm going to choose that I'm going to use the six and the one for my points. And I'm doing this part kind of out of order because I, I tend to, like, while the dice are here, want to think about it. So I go ahead and give myself my five action points because they're not going to be used for this part of the 
part of the game anyway. So I already gave myself my five, and I've decided that I'm going to use those. Um, had this been a lull turn, which means these would have been the same. So let's say that this was a. Let's say this was also a four. Right? Okay. And I chose in this case I wanted a lull turn. And you have to remember that's a one. Uh, and I chose that I wanted a lull, a lull turn. I could declare that these were mine. I would get zero actions, and I would follow this process here for a lull turn. Um, actions are cheaper during a lull turn, so you really want it. You would only choose a lull turn most likely if you already had action had an action saved, and you and you really needed to do a refit, uh, repair, rest, or adventure. You really needed to do one of those because that would give you um, those would cost one action point during the little turn. So I have I had zero, so I have five now, but I had zero. So I don't want a little turn. The thing that happens and the other thing that happens a little turn is this die is ignored for ship placement. So it says four, four, and six again. You would only place ships in those areas. You would ignore this one completely, and then you would also um, you would also uh, go through and possibly get rid of some of these. Uh, Rebellion cubes, uh, what are they called? Uprising cubes, sorry. So you potentially lose some of those. And in my case, I need those because liberation is a times three for me. So I definitely want to keep those in place. So, all right, so we're back to where we have one, four, four, and six. And the reason I'm putting them in order is you do work them uh, in order. So, um, so we'll take a look first at C1, ocean one, right? Uh, there's not 11 oceans. Well, actually, there might be, because you count the small oceans. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Ha <laughs> ha! Ocean's 11. How funny. Um, so the first step is to, uh, when your placement is put a hidden ship in an ocean or a hidden ship in an adjacent ocean. So starting with 1, there's no room to put a hidden ship. Now, adjacency for placement is the uh, travel lines, which are blue, or the dotted lines, which connect them only for the purposes of placement. So, I can't place one here. I can't place one here. There's no room here. Going over to the Indian Ocean, there's no room here. Okay? So, ooh, it's not good. I just cleared a bunch of ships, but I didn't clear where I needed to, I guess. Uh, I can flip a, a white non-warship token in that ocean or an adjacent ocean to its gray warship side. Okay. These guys here are gray. They start out white early in the game, which means they're not warships, so they have no attack value. Uh, they just have a defense value. And then as part of this process, uh, you can flip them over, and then when you attack them, they attack you first uh, with a die roll. So uh, I, have no, uh, I have no white ships left in this re region or adjacent. So this is actually the first time for me this is going to happen. And this is draw a warship token and place it in any empty location. If there are none, you immediately lose the game. If you place it in the Nautilus's current ocean, fight it immediately. Okay. So fortunately I have some places I don't feel like fighting right now. So I have, I have the whole North Atlantic free. I have a lot of the South Atlantic free. I do have where I'm at, a uh, Cape of Good Hope free. Uh, I think I'm just going to draw and put one here. So, put your bag. So you start out with the white ships uh, and some yellow, the white yellow ships in here, in the bag at the start of the game. And then these, these two get added by event. Uh, and then these get added, act two, act three, and then the rising action will bring the stack of ships and throw them in the bag. Also, there's a couple of spots here where some, the blue ships are put and the green ships are put. Green ships just dropped into the bag. So those are there. The blue ships went in earlier. Uh, for an easy game, uh, which is what I'm I, playing now, the sailor level, uh, you actually can move these into here, and they drop in two, two spots later. And right here, they drop in three spots later. So, um, or the three, excuse me, three spots later, completely. So I did that, and so anyway, green ships are in the bag now. Those have all been added to the bag. Not a lot of white ships remaining. So I'm going to put this guy in the North Atlantic. If I wasn't talking, this doesn't take all that long. All right, so we got a light yellow, which is good. Oh, it's actually the Sea Serpent. Dun, dun, dun. He's a monster. Okay. 
and he's worth some points. So we're going to put him right there. But he also attacks with a ten, and there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of uh, die modifiers for tens, so that's not good at all. Uh, basically, he hits if you roll a uh, two through nine. You get a 10, 11, 12, he misses. So that's not good. Okay, but anyway, so we dealt with the one. So now we got two fours we got to deal with. So four is right here, and four is free. And the good thing is, I can actually uh, put uh, hidden hidden ship tokens down. And I'm going to go ahead and go up here. And I'm going to do a draw pile and just take these hidden ship tokens. They're just markers. And I'm actually going to put four more four. I'm going to put one here. And for another four, I'm going to put one here. All right. Because they're, it's, even though they're fours, they're adjacent to the three, so I can put them in three if I want to. It's my choice. All right. Oh, you know what? I don't think it's my choice. I'll take that back. It's a hidden ship in that ocean. If you can't put one there, you can go adjacent. So I've, I've been so clogged lately that I've actually been able to just roll over to the, uh, to the adjacent oceans that I forgot that you can't do that. So, all right. So they both go into four. So the line, south of the line is getting kind of full. All right, and then we've got six. Six is here. So here's where we would do it. So we want to try to put one here. We can't put a hidden one there. The next phase is to put a hidden marker in an adjacent ocean. We've already seen that the Western Pacific is full. So we can't put one there where it's adjacent. Uh, it is adjacent to here. It's full, so it's adjacent to me. And the first priority is to just go with a hidden marker. So when I, if I chose to attack a hidden marker, that's when it would be resolved from the draw bag into a ship. So that is the end of the placement phase. So this can come off as a answer for anything else. And I had five actions, and I can go into my action phase. And uh, I found Nemo. He's over here on the Nautilus. And uh, the action choices that I have are, as I showed you before there, I can adventure for two. This is not a lull turn. And adventuring means I get to draw uh, an adventure card from here. Oh, what did I say before is when you, you stack this deck, right, based on the rules, you shuffle each each uh, each uh, act card and put a certain number of adventure cards on them. Totally random across the whole deck. Uh, so unlike uh, uh, a States of Siege game where you usually have three distinct periods, these cards all get shuffled up together and put in there. But then the extra ones that don't get shuffled up get put in, you get shuffled into the just the adventure deck. And so you can adventure on those, so I could draw this card, uh, do the adventure, if I succeed, then I get to draw two treasures, because right now there are two treasure tokens uh, on there, and those get added on. During the lull turn phase, one thing I forgot to show you was uh, you would put a, uh, so if that had been a four like I showed you in the video, uh, a treasure token would have gone here. A treasure available token would have gone here, which is just the multicolored gems, and then one goes on to that adventure deck as well and gets added to it. So I did it once earlier in the game and got four treasures. Uh, and they're not all treasures, because there's some of them that say, hey, discard this and lose a resource or a character. So that's done. Discard this and take two uh, notoriety points. Discard this and take three notoriety hits. Ugh, not good. So, All right, so back to the action, sorry. Uh, you can adventure, you can attack. There's two types of attack, a bold attack and a stalk attack. A stalk attack um, gives you a... Uh, a plus one modifier, uh, but when you're done, you're done. You can only attack one ship. Uh, if you do a bold attack, you get no modifier, and then you can just keep attacking as long as you as you uh, don't lose, or if you don't take your victim as salvage for potential upgrades. So uh, usually, in a, if I was here, um, if I was over here, I would um, I would just do a stalk attack to give myself the benefit of that, and then. Uh, uh, but if there's a long line of them and, you've, and, you, and, you, and they're revealed so you can kind of see them and see what you're getting into, uh, you can take that that way. So, but I'm over here in Cube of Good Hope. So, uh, Insight allows you to place a cube. Now, uh, that's beneficial to me, and I have two, uh, two perks uh, that let me gain benefits from that. One, I found this uh, sunken treasure fleet, which gives me a bonus there, and I have this uh, arcane library upgrade. That gives me a plus one when I do a search or an insight action. So uh, I start out at a plus three there. Um, so that's a good thing to, to do. And it benefits my explore uh, capabilities. Um, what else we got? So we got move, uh, one ocean. And I have 
uh, explorer in the sailor mode you get this for free otherwise uh, you, have, you can immediately pay for it uh, with resources with crew resources um, since you're already salvage at the start of the game but I I'm doing the sailor mode which allowed me to have this for free the hydro drive lets me move uh, two, two spaces at a time two oceans at a time so I can move one two uh, because I'm a sub they're all ships I can move freely around there's no penalty uh, for moving and encountering other boats uh, one thing that's interesting in the notes is there's no guns uh, on the uh, on the Nautilus. I'm ramming the ships, so that's pretty cool. Um, although there are, you can add torpedoes, and I had a perk that was give me cannonballs or something, uh, so I could actually fire some cannonballs at him, uh, and then take. But I had to take a uh, notoriety hit every time I used them, so that was not good. This is all about managing notoriety, and right now I've got to manage that and stay. Uh, it'll take seven more points. So that's not good. Usually when you attack ships, you get notoriety. Uh, as you can see here, like if I attack him and sink him, I get one notoriety hit. Uh, but this guy I can hit and not get him. Uh, and you can attack any ship you want at any time, you know, in your ocean. Uh, there's just a uh, penalty if there's other warships available in the area. It's a minus one penalty on your attack. And remember, they get to hit you first. So before you gamble any of your... Uh, resources you might lose some so back to the options here so that's in sight uh, you can move like I said one ocean or in my case I can move two so I move one or two uh, for two points I can rest which means it allows me to regain crew hopefully uh, repair allows me to repair my hull and refit the Nautilus means I can trade in uh, salvage for an upgrade uh, if I want to pay for it and finally I can search for treasure if there is treasure in the ocean I'm in. Here there's not one, so I can't do a search. I did wipe out the South Atlantic and, and search for that treasure. Uh, so here's one that does have treasure available. And I can do the search, but when you do a search, you get a minus one on your roll for every revealed ship in that area. So this would be a minus two, just because the ships are actually there and have a chance to disrupt my search. Uh, the search actions have a, have a success table that's conveniently right on the board, which is awesome. Uh, anything green is a pass. Even if there's a penalty, you passed it. So, like, you get one notoriety uh, on this rest, but you gain a crew still. So, if you wager uh, one of your resources, uh, and here it says you can exert Nemo or your hull to get crew, uh, you don't lose it unless you get one of these red options here. So, uh, I found it pretty easy to, to score some of these, but you know what? I've had some bad die rolls, too, and it's really frustrating to me. So, but that's part of the game, so... Um, so it's my action time. So what I want to do here, I want to, um, uh, I want to incite, I think, but I have nowhere on the board here that I can conveniently, uh, incite because like here, there's no, there's no revealed ships. That would be good, but there's also no incitement locations because they're connected here by these brown lines. Um, where I am already has one. Uh, here, I've already taken care of those. If I go in the Indian Ocean, I'd have a minus three penalty uh, to successfully incite. Um, but you know what? I get a bonus. I get a bonus, and I can I can exert Nemo to do that. So let's just try it, just so I can show you. Okay, so I'm going to do an insight action. And an insight action uh, costs me one. So I'm going to pay the one point. Uh, first of all, excuse me. First action is to move. So I'm going to move over here. And I'm in the action. All right. And then I pay one point for the movement. Now I'm going to pay one point to insight. All right. And how the incitement works is I get minus three for exerting any one ship resource. Well, Nemo's still my best bet. So I'm going to exert him right here. I'm wagering him to get a plus three. And then we come down here and I get, I can do a, a plus X for any one spent treasure tokens VP value. So I would discard it and get that. I get plus one for arcane library and I get plus two for sunken treasure fleet. So right now I'm at a plus six. All right. And then there's a minus one for a revealed ship token. All right. So incite, inciting actually helps me too because it lets me lower uh, my uh, notoriety. 
because I got the people with me here because I'm getting riled up about stuff. So right now I'm at a plus six, minus three is a plus three. So I'm going to go ahead and spend one of my plus twos. Give me a plus two. So now I'm at a plus five. You just discard that, that's out of the game, doesn't go back in the bag. So I'm now at a plus five. All right, well I need at least a seven to succeed. So even if I roll a two, I'm gonna succeed. I'm gonna at least not fail and lose my Nemo. All right, so I'll be all right there, but I wanna get higher than that. So I wanna get a nine or higher. And so right now I'm at a, uh, what did I say, plus five. All right, so it's a two dot, 2d6 roll. And I got a five, plus a five is a 10. So we'll consult the chart there and it says for 10, Enterprising successful, I place a cube and lose one of my notoriety. Which means I actually kind of gain notoriety. But the number goes down. No, I lose notoriety. Yeah, anyway. I improved my notoriety. Let's just put it that way. All right, well, I'm going to pick here that we're going to put it on the uh, Schellinger Civil War. Doesn't matter. Uh, although, I guess technically there may be things there. Those are just for flavor. There may be cards that reference those specifically. And then I get to knock this down one. So I'm driving myself a little further from the end of the game because I want to make sure I've got enough to get through that adventure deck. All right. So that was my, I did a move, I did an insight. And I get my Nemo back. I risked him, but I was fine. All right. I think we're going to try again to insight. All right. So I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to To insight, so I get again plus three. I'm gonna gamble him for plus three, um, and then I get plus three is six again, and then I get minus three is minus three, and then minus one per uprising cube already in that ocean, and there's one. So now I'm at a six minus four, I'm at only at a plus two. So I don't want to lose Nemo, so I'm gonna go ahead and spend another one of my two tokens here, and that gives me a Plus four on my die roll. So let's see what we get. All right, I got six plus four is a 10. Same thing we got last time. So I get to place a cube and take. And decrease my variety one. All right, so that was very helpful. Let me slide that back because we wagered it and did not lose it. I'm going to go ahead and try to do an attack here. I'm in the Indian Ocean and these guys have very low. Uh, hits uh, on me, so um, actually a little low ability to hit because if I raise roll that number higher, they miss. So I'm going to give it a shot just so we can see combat real quick. Uh, so I'm going to use my action, and I'm going to do what's called a bold attack. All right, and take the bold attack icon here, and you drop it on the ship you're going to attack, and I'll attack this guy first. Okay, targeting the ship. All right, so the first thing I have to do is roll to see if they hit me. So we'll do that. He needs, he needs a five or lower to hit me. And he got a 10, so he missed me. Yay, miss me, miss me, now you gotta kiss me. All right, so now we've got a nine. I've got to, I've got to hit him with a nine. Now the only modifiers I can use on a ship attack is you get a plus one if you're making a stalk, which I'm not doing, plus uh, X for exerting any one ship resource, and the X means you know whatever on the... Uh, on the board here tells you it is. Uh, I get a plus one with a strength and prow, which is an upgrade I don't have, and minus one of any other warships around the area. Not per warship, just if there are warships there. So I'm gonna take my Nemo, give me a plus three, and I am going to, uh, so it's a minus one, so it's a plus two on my attack. So I need to get a nine or higher with this attack. Now, the good thing is, I do have these guys still. If I fail, I can I can still take these DRMs after the roll. So, let's try and I hope it's not necessary. So, I have a plus two on my attack. And we roll. And we got a four plus two is a six. Whoa, tough call here. So, if I miss, uh, missing here is a plus one. And then I lose one or two wrist ship resources. All right, so I got a one there. Um, 
Since the lowest dice is a one, I only lose one, but it would put my Nemo to erratic, which I do not want, and I do not want to waste my notorieties. So I'm at a four, plus a two is a six. And I need three, three to reach that nine. So I can use her, which gives me a plus three, and I have to pay a Nemo to get it, so I lose a Nemo anyway. What I can do here is I can take, I can take Kansei, and I could use him to get a reroll. And then not only do I lose four points, I've got a card here that if he's still in play, I can take free treasure, uh, treasure draws. I can do free treasure draws per action spent to get three. Uh, and if I don't use him, then he, is a, he counts as a pass card. So... I don't know if I want to get rid of Kansei. I don't know if I want to take the loss. It did not go like I wanted it to. Does it ever? It's not very bold. I am going to. I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to. Take my plus three DRM and sacrifice my first officer. Right, so do that. I get a plus three after the roll. So that brings it up to a nine. So I've sunk him. Okay. So he is off. My bold attack is still alive because I did not lose. So he comes off the board and goes onto the Indian Ocean space. I have no penalty of notoriety. Okay, so this one's resolved. I get my Nemo back, because I won the attack. But then the price I pay for using her is I lose a Nemo. So Nemo's now gonna go to this section. All right. And she flips over, she's out of the game. Unless I'm raising back. Okay. And... Now the problem I have is, I have this where I can get a Nemo back. But I may save it for when I'm really desperate. And I may get something else that brings him up too. So, that attack's over. That one's done, dealt with, everything's fine. I can now press the attack if I want to. And I do, and I'm going to go and attack this Armored Frigate, because he attacks me with less. So he has to hit with a six. So that's who I'm targeting. I hope he's on this with a six. And he hits an eight, so that was a miss. Wish I'd taken the seven one now. All right, so he missed me, and now I've got a 10. I'll go ahead and miss Nemo again. So I have a plus three, uh, and then a plus, a minus one, because there still is a war another warship here. So I'm at a plus two on the die roll, and I need to get a 10. Boy, was that stupid. All right, well, let's see what happens. Hopefully I get, get, get an eight or something like that. I got a plus two. I got a four. Let's get out of All right, so now I'm really in trouble. Okay, so I got a four, I got a plus two. Fortunately, the low die was a one. So, because I lost, I have to increase my notoriety. I had need to increase my notoriety for that sh No, I did not increase my notoriety for that ship because that one did not have one. Uh, so I increase my notoriety for losing, and I lose one resource, which now puts Nemo here at unstable, and one away from losing. So I'm going to stop the attack, because I lost. So that attack is over. And... Go ahead and move these up, because the ships don't matter. Uh, I'm going to call off the attack, and then I am going to immediately... Uh, discard uh, this to be Nemo. And it's going to put Nemo at least back up here in a slightly safer erratic uh, space. And that's where he is. So, 
So you saw move, you saw a couple of incite turns, and you saw a successful battle and a failed battle. So that's great. Great, great, great. And I have one action left, and I think I'm going to carry that over to the next turn. Uh, again, normally a turn is not going to take as long as it has with, with me explaining everything. Uh, it moves very quickly. Uh, but that is a quick gameplay brief of how to play uh, Nemo's War from Victory Point Games. Very, very, very excellent. Very engaging. Awesome game. Thanks for watching. God bless you.